Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my friends. Wherever you're watching the Stop Doing Nothing show, as always, 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 I appreciate you. And it's been a little bit. I've been slacking a little bit, producing content for other people, doing all kinds of marketing stuff. It's not like I've been sitting around doing nothing. I've been doing stuff. I just haven't been pressing record. So um, I like it when I'm held accountable. I like it when people get on my case and say, Patrick, we need to do this. And if you've watched any of my past videos, you know there's one guy who always gets on my case, who always holds me accountable, and he's fired up today. And he says, Patrick, we got to get out more content to make these people smarter and help them have an impact. So as always, if you're sitting there by yourself, give a big round of applause for Mr. Phil. Mr. Phil is back with us here on the Stop Doing Nothing show. And uh, how's your day going so far, Phil? Good, Patrick. It's a really good day, man. Other than what the heck, man? It looks like ClickFunnels is down and maybe Cloudflare is down. What, what's going on, dude? Yeah, I don't know. Right before this call, you guys know, um, I was I was talking to a client and we're having some some landing page issues. And Phil and I think kind of had a predetermined talk, a predetermined topic. But then we realized we both kind of have a, a, a background in business management and disaster recovery. So we thought it would be really good for us to pivot and kind of help you with, you know, thinking about how to make sure your business, you know, outlasts any outage or any kind of disasters. So uh, Phil has worked on a great list of topics. I've kind of added some notes to it. And so today's show is going to be kind of how to handle when some of your marketing or your IT resources goes down. And first of all, I'll tell you guys my background in this area later. But Phil, tell us a little bit about what's your background in this world of like disaster recovery computers failing, all that stuff. So a lifetime ago, I was a VP of IT for a financial services company in Milwaukee. And my job, I was the communication point for all disasters. If something went down, my job was to communicate it out. The impact, how long it was going to be down, why it was down, who was notified, if that impacted any of our backup systems, if that impacted production systems, if that impacted the day's run, we ran batch every night. So my job, uh, you know, as a VP of IT was really to be the quarterback of communications for all things business continuity and disaster recovery in partnership with the head of disaster recovery in partnership with the head of risk and in partnership with the chief information officer, as well as the COO, the chief operations officer to make sure that we understood everything that was impacted. And I'll tell you, it's a lot more than we think about, especially when you're running your own marketing, because now, like back then, I mean, honestly, it was like, okay, we'll go kickstart the server. Hopefully it'll come back or it's somebody else's. And we wait and we could see it when it came back on. But now everything's in the cloud, man. It's, right. it's kind of strange, Patrick. Exactly, exactly. And my background here a little bit was well, well pre-cloud. So I have a background in a big data center for a big black and yellow car rental company, which shall remain nameless, which is right down the street from me here. And let me tell you, when we had disasters there, it really did hurt. But I was the head of disaster recovery there. And that was back in the day when we actually physically had tapes. Like we would back up our, our mainframe stuff to tapes and weekly we would we would back up everything to tape and ship it off to a vault in Texas because we would assume that Oklahoma City got hit by a tornado and wiped out the data center and we would have to grab that vault of tapes and go to Poughkeepsie, New, I think it's uh, someplace on the New Jersey side of New York, Sterling Forest, wherever Sterling Forest is. And, and we, 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 we would pretend once a year to have a disaster at, at the data center and we would do a full recovery. And we had like 48 hours. And so I would, I like wouldn't sleep for 24 hours. We would work on getting the business back up and running as a test. And I learned a lot there, which I now carry over into the marketing side of the business and into my personal stuff. So what, so what Phil and I have done for you is we've kind of run through a list of topics here. We're going to ping pong here, uh, talking about our experience. But again, as you're taking notes, be thinking about, you know, what would I do if I lost this in my business or I lost this in my business? How would I recover? There are some things that you can't, you have no backup for. You can't back up your Facebook page, but there are some things you can do on social media to, to make sure that not all your eggs are in one basket. So where are we starting today, Phil? Well, uh, let, let's start with the, the whole fact of what the heck backup means. Let's be clear, right? It's a point in time capture of data or an alternative routing path to make things work in case of a disaster. 
Backup does not mean often a hot cut like Patrick when you and I worked in those where we take one data center completely down and we bring the other one up. Nowadays, most of that is done server side out of your control. We're going to talk today about the stuff that's in your control. I think it's important to understand that, right? So you can't, uh, you know, what you can't control is if the whole internet goes down, well, you're dead, right? If there's no DNS propagation, meaning uh, we saw a couple years ago when, uh, you know, some of the DNS was hacked, and that means that uh, Google.com won't resolve to whatever the number is behind it. We're not going to talk. Uh, you can't, you can't proof around that. You can't disaster proof that. Right. But let's talk about what we can control, and let's start with email. Right. Let's start with email because that's the big one. You know, oh my gosh, what happens if I can't send or receive email? Is there any alternative, Patrick? What do you What do you think, or maybe even some troubleshooting thoughts on on send and receive email? Because sometimes it isn't down; it's just right. wrong. Right. Um, my take on email is uh, a lot of people are afraid of the cloud. Uh, we, we assume everything's in the cloud, but everything doesn't have to be in the cloud. But my take on email is I, I a while back, you know, I, I drank the Kool-Aid and I committed to Google because Google has a ginormous cloud and they very rarely go down. I mean, I think their up rate is someplace, you know, down to two or three or four nines when it comes, you know, 99.99% up rate. So I don't actually have email on my local computer. I have a web browser up. And that's how I get to my email. Now, if for some reason my laptop was stolen out of my car or my house burnt down, those are the two things I think about, by the way, when I think about disaster recovery. If those things are down, I could I could take my phone, obviously, and have backup. I'd go over to my neighbor's house and use, use his web browser. But like if Google email was actually down, now that I'm thinking about this, um, I think I have like a Yahoo email account. So having some email accounts and some other services, some other cloud-based services, I think, I don't have MindSpring's around anymore. My very first email address was on MindSpring, but that was, ooh, that was definitely back in the day. Um, but um, I have a main email account for my domain. I've got a G, I've got a couple of Gmail accounts. And then, I mean, those are all still at Google, but then I have some non-Google accounts. What, what about you? What do you do for email back then? Well, uh, to your point about the phone, a lot of times it's stored offline. Right. So that means that I can still access it. Now, can I send and receive? No, but I can still access it. If I needed to, I know that I have an old Hotmail account. I know that I have a Yahoo account. Yes, I have a Gmail account as well, because sometimes it's the DNS propagation that doesn't work, meaning philgerbyshack.com, which is where my domain is, right? I'm phil at philgerbyshack.com. That email may not always work. In fact, I, or it may not work for somebody, right? I've got folks who say, well, I don't know. I don't get your email, but if I send it from my Gmail account or I send it to their Gmail account, even though it's all Google Suite, sometimes that works as well. Um, I back that up and then uh, I do, I do have Microsoft Outlook on my computer and it, I don't open it up often, but every month or so I do fire it up. I download, uh, email. Um, now how well will that work if Google Suite is down? I don't know, but if I can get to some of my messages, right, I might right. be able to do something. At least I can find my contacts because remember, often now we have our contacts tied to our email, which exactly. can be a problem. But that leads us to the next point about a CRM, Patrick. What do we right. do? You know, CRM, right? There's lots of choices here. I'm a big nimble guy. I like one page CRM. I like nutshell. I know you're a keep guy. You like keep for your uh, formerly Infusionsoft. But what do you do if your CRM goes down, man? If my CRM goes down, that's that's actually kind of a painful one because not only that's where my contacts are, that's where I like some of my marketing automation also runs. So that's a really painful one. For that one, I think the best we can really do is just export our contacts on occasion. Uh, you know, with some of the major CRMs, I use Keep. I've got some other ones that I recommend for clients. Oftentimes, I say just export that stuff to CSV and put it into a cloud drive someplace, iCloud, Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, just do that maybe once a month. You know, if you're a company that has a very high sales volume, maybe do that once a week. But for example, for me, I'm not getting hundreds of new leads every single week. So I don't, I could probably back up mine once a week or once a month uh, and I'd be okay. And not only, don't only look at backing up the contacts, maybe, you know, usually probably have like a company's list and a deals list 
and just go to all the different places there where you can find a way to export it. And I would say just dump that out of there, put it into a CSV. If for some reason the company has long-term issues, then it's usually pretty easy to import that into another CRM. How about, for example, like if your nutshell went down or if one of the other CRMs you mentioned went down, what would you do for that? Well, the good news is, is that they're already backed up in my email. Right. So I'd have the contacts there. Um, as far as the company's list or the accounts list or whatever, um, I wouldn't. Pro I probably wouldn't prospect as effectively, let's be clear, because if I haven't touched them yet, those likely only exist in the CRM. But that being said, um, because they're in my contacts, I'd have them there. Your point about backup is good. I would also say if it's small enough, email it to yourself for yeah. sure, or even get an external hard drive. Go buy an external hard drive. You can probably buy a one terabyte drive for less than 200 bucks. Yeah, that's so that's, you know, that's yeah. what I would, yeah, that's what I would recommend. I would find a way to get that knowing, here's the thing though, I'd probably lose a lot of the history, but yeah. I would have a lot of the contacts. So right. for me, uh, the, the power of the CRM is in the history. The fact that I can know that last week I sent you 37 text messages and here's the content of them is valuable. But the right. fact that I still have your phone number, well, heck, I can rebuild from there. Exactly. So backing up a CRM, like like email, like website, because the next thing I want to touch on is your website. All these things are in the cloud. So uh, if it's if someone's down, it's not just affecting one client. It's probably affecting a thousand or ten thousand clients. If you know if Keep CRM goes down, which it does on a rare occasion, people are just losing their minds all over the internet. So you're not the only one. Um, so the the cool part of, to me about us developing this concept called the cloud is is there's a lot of built-in redundancy and a built-in built in backups already. So some of the stuff we're talking about, by the way, are really outlandish scenarios. I mean, I cannot remember the last time Gmail was down. It's been, I don't know if it's been 10 years, whatever it is. They're just really long good time. stuff. Yeah, long, long time. Okay, so we've talked about, um, you know, email. We've talked about CRM. Um, what about my website, Phil? How do I back up my website? Like if I have a website at GoDaddy, or at Bluehost, what the heck can I do to back that up? Well, let, let's break that down, right? So first you've got the domain host, right? Let's right. the domain registrar, which I don't recommend, and I know you don't recommend having that at the same place as you host, right? just in case, right? And then we've also got, maybe most places have a Cloudflare as well. Cloudflare mm -hmm. translates for you, and that helps with backup as well, because then if one server is down, another server is probably up, and you're okay. So with that, you should absolutely export, if you have a WordPress site or any site that's database driven, which most sites these days are, right. export it, set up a frequent backup so that it goes to Dropbox or box.com or you get emailed it. I, I will tell you though, I used to have it set up for uh, email and it completely clogged up my email so much that it slowed my email down to a crawl. So I don't recommend sending it to email but if it goes to Dropbox and then sends me a notification, which is what Dropbox is really good at, then it's like, hey, Phil, doofus, we backed it up. So then what I would do is then I could take that DNS if I needed to. Like if I knew it was going to be down for a couple of days, I could always upload the file and pop it up somewhere, especially mm -hmm. um, if it was e-commerce and I knew it was going to be down for a while. I absolutely would do that for one of my clients because frankly, it might be easier to spend 10 hours rebuilding it that way than it would be to lose all the money that would happen if my, if I didn't have any sales for a couple of days. I don't know. What about you, Patrick? Uh, the, the backing up WordPress to um, Dropbox is actually, that's one of my favorite ones outside of my host doing the backups because I can't remember the, there is a plugin for WordPress. I can't remember it, what it's called. But you actually connect it to Dropbox, and it does exactly what you're saying, is it will back it up daily, and the backup zip files appears in your Dropbox. So it will never end up in your email. It might notify you via email also. Backup WP. Yeah, Backup WP okay. is the, uh, yeah, that's the one that you have. And there's a few other ones as well, um, but that one works really, really well. BackupWP.com for backing up WordPress to Dropbox. Right. That's what they do, right? That's the offer there. Yeah, so so that's good. Uh, the idea you said of exporting is is also good. WordPress has a place for you to export posts, blog posts, which all of us have a lot of, and pages, which is also good. Uh, but nothing beats you know a good backup plugin. Um, actually, I take that back. I'm just gonna sit there and contradict myself. 
I prefer backups to happen at the server level versus the plugin level. The plugin level you may need, you may not have a choice. I actually prefer them to happen at the server level because if they're at the server level, like the hosting company is doing it, there's a better chance of them getting everything. Um, I Sometimes you know, we really customize our websites and a backup plugin gets everything, but doesn't, doesn't get like some bizarre little CSS tweak that we made that was in some bizarre little file or things like that. So I actually prefer like my hosting company to the backups. For example, my main websites right now are at WP Engine and I've had to use them for backups and restores before and they back up everything that's in my WordPress folder. They back up stuff I'm probably even thinking of. So in a, what I'm talking about when it comes to website backups is in addition to what your hosting company is doing. It never hurts to have something you can, have, you can never have too many backups. I'm a pilot. You can never have too much gas in your airplane, and you can never have too many backups. Um, and, and this is 2021, man. Hard drive space is cheap. Terabytes, terabyte hard drives and multi-terabyte hard drives on, on Amazon are just, they're just dirt cheap. I'm under my desk right now. I've got several terabytes of stuff. I just, it's just, and I could lose it and just go up to Best Buy and get another one. So we've got some ideas um, you know, for the website backup. So we've talked about website. We've talked about email. Oh, and really quick, you talked about this real quick. Why don't you, I have my opinion, why don't you like having your email and your website at the same company? Well, I, I just find, um, unless it's Google, I will tell you, I trust Google now. I register with Google. I don't host there, but I do also have my email there. Um, cause those are the three things that I, and I just like, I believe that if one, like if Google fails, everything at Google is probably going to fail. Maybe not, but that's just what I believe right. with that. That means that if I spread the risk out, I now have an opportunity for something to come back. If my website's down, I'm hoping my email's okay. If my email's okay, I'm hoping my DNS is okay. I'm hoping that something is going to work. So for me, putting all my eggs in one basket includes DNS, email, and website. So yeah, I don't, I don't host, um, I, I don't host where I register. I mean, a lot of these places, they give you a free domain for that, but that they really, I mean, for 20, but let's say 20 bucks, right? Cause right now I think GoDaddy's up to $21.99 now okay. for a domain, which, pfft, no, not moving on my domains from there. Let's be really clear. Um, I use Google now. Um, I, I just don't see it, right? I mean, for 20 bucks a year, I would want to, you know, someone who is dedicated to domain registrar or Google, right? I, I don't know why, but I just have a lot of trust for Google. What about you? Um, I trust, I use Google now for mine. Uh, a couple of reasons. One, like you, they're just really good at it. Um, number one, they give you anonymous registration for free. Right. I think GoDaddy yep. charges that. So I love that. Um, in addition to everything you've said, I've also believed that uh, probably in the past 10 years, we've gotten some companies that really specialize and really do things very well. Google is very good at email. I hardly ever see any spam when I have a, a, any of my, my Google or Google Apps accounts. You know what? I'm not sure that Google does websites that well, but I don't care. They do email very well, so I like having my email over there. WP Engine does websites very well. They are amazing when it comes to WordPress websites and WordPress support, but they don't do email because it's uh, email is a totally different beast. Uh, for a company, a, a company that has to do email and has to do websites, they have to have people who have these varied skill sets, and they're trying to do everything. And as you've learned in business, if you've been in business over five minutes, you can't do everything well. So I like keeping stuff with the company that that does it the best. And for me, for email, that's Google and yeah, email is Google, and then for websites, it's something like WP Engine or Cloudways. Like, so kind of best of breed there, kind of things. That's that's one of my main reasons I do it. Yeah, yeah, no, I like best of breed too. I think that's super important, right? I, I prefer not to put again all my eggs in one basket. Right. I want people to be experts. I don't want them to be generalists. Well, I feel the same way with my technology. I have a lot of different things that touch, and that's okay. Got it. Now, briefly, we've touched on domain, but just really, again, to readdress it, is both Phil and I also are kind of having a belief of just not having your domain uh, where your web host is also. I, I go to Google if I have an idea. I go to Google. I register the domain. And then I'll worry about the email and where I'm going to host the website later. 
and I make sure you know the 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 domain is at Google, and all my domains to tell you, should probably stay at Google until I'm six feet under. There's no reason to ever move a domain if you move web hosts. Would you agree on that? I would agree. I would agree, right? I, I don't. I, I think just keeping them in one spot just makes it easy if they're good, right? I mean, that being said, right. again, if they double prices, then I move, right? So I'll use my two favorite registrars are either Google because they offer free privacy or Rebel.com. Okay. GoDaddy, I'm slowly migrating my, all my domains away. I used to have them all there. I had 85 domains, and A, I'm less of a domain squatter now than I used to be, and B, I think it just, you know, GoDaddy just continues to, you know, they spam us, they sell our information and they're charging us more. Mm -hmm. Sayonara. Yeah. And probably another reason, because we're talking about single points of failure, is if your domain and your email and your uh, website are all at the same company, man, when that company is down, you have access to nothing. Um, I'm going to give you a scenario here where I've had to do this for a client before. This is a good reason to do what Phil is saying and what I'm saying. Let's say you you use our ideal setup. You bought your domain at Google, your website's over at WP Engine, and your email is over at Gmail. Let's say uh, WP Engine for some reason goes down. Well, in, in the old school days, you know, basically you wouldn't have access to even fix your own problem. But in the setup that Phil's talking about, that I'm talking about, if WP Engine was down for a couple of minutes, no big deal. But if they're down for like a day or two, then it's time to switch companies. What you can do is you can go over to your where you bought your domain. You can just flip a switch and end up over at Bluehost or at someplace else. You couldn't do that if everything was at one location. So that's the kind of the main reason that I like having my domain someplace separate from where my web host is. Agree or disagree? Absolutely agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Right on the money. Good. Okay. Let's keep moving on. Um, so we talked about domains. We've, we've got a whole agenda here for you guys. Domains, where to keep things. Bill, how do I back up social media? Can't I have like a backup Facebook account someplace? <laughs> well, <laughs> backup Facebook, no, but you can back up, back up the data for sure, right? You can right. export your data, and I would tell you to do that. But don't put all your eggs even on social media. You want to own as much of that as you can. It's one of the reasons why email marketing is never going to die. Social media says you have to keep it on Facebook and we it's my rules if I'm Facebook and I can say like they did, oh, I'm going to change the rules or like Apple did, oh, I'm not going to let you retarget like I used to let you retarget. We're going to make it more privacy related. But an email always allows you to contact them. Now, does it mean you can spam the crap out of them? No. Does it mean that you get their email forever? No. But it does mean you own a little bit more of that and you can take that other places and you can always one-to-one -one message people that you have their email address. If you belong in the, if, you're, if your business is located in the United States and you're talking to people in the United States, I mean, GDPR and some of these other, uh, Castle in Canada, different spam laws for sure. But if you're in the United States talking to people in the United States, social media, is just one of many places. Can you back up your data? Sure. Is that going to help you? No, it's not. You're dead, right? If if that's your only source of stuff, right? Yeah. The same. The, 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 what we're talking about is the same way for LinkedIn and the same way for Twitter. It's always good to have multiple. Number one, be in multiple social channels. I like at least three myself. Uh, and then to also, like Bill said, get that get that information into your list someplace. Email list, SMS list. Um, these days, I'm even experimenting with alternate social media networks and even um, kind of um, not I'm not going to say alternate social media networks because to me, that sounds like parlor or something like that. But what I'm referring to is like using something like Mighty Networks to even set up your own, quote unquote, social media website. The company Mighty Works, Mighty Networks, real quick, used to be a company called Ning which was it was really easy to set up your own sites. They've rebanded, they've rebranded, they've gotten a bunch of VC money. I'm connected with the CEO on Twitter and I'm looking at some of the stuff that Mighty Networks is doing and it's just really, really cool. So I'm slowly setting up my own social network there. But um, I, I for social networks, Phil, I personally like being Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube are my three minimum I want people to be on. What about you? 
Yeah, well, LinkedIn for sure. LinkedIn is first for me, uh, no matter what. You got to be on LinkedIn. Um, I really, uh, with if you're B to C, you got to be on Facebook and Instagram for sure. You you need to, because um, I believe in advertising, right? I, I think advertising works. I think it's important advertising, not just organic. Five years ago, I did not said that. I believe that's true now. You need advertising. So if you're B2C, one of those video, you need a video platform. YouTube is still, it's part of Google. So let's be honest, right? That's important. Right. It's a hugely powerful search engine in its own right. right. Um, but I do think like you do, whether it's Mighty Networks or actually community.com, which is text only, I think it's great to pick an alternative social network, if you will, where you can connect with people more directly than even email, right? Mighty Networks does have some cool stuff. I'm on uh, one with, uh, you know, with some, a variety of folks. Mm -hmm. They're good. But I will tell you, though, as soon as people turn off notifications, those networks, those platforms are dead to me. Yeah. And I do that a lot of times, right? Because they're, they're notification driven. Like it's not part of my routine. Now, maybe in nine months, if I committed to using it for nine months, maybe it would be. But I'll tell you what, I get people that invite me to their mighty networks. And in time, I just turn up notifications off because people spam it because moderation is what causes every network to fail. Lack of moderation right. and expectations set wrong. That's going to be the death of a lot of these networks. Yep, yep, those are both good. Um, I do like the fact that you can't have courses on there, though. So, uh, and the one challenge you you brought up, what is it, community.com for texting? Um, the one challenge I have with that, because you and I rarely disagree, is community.com you cannot export information out of. Ooh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. terrible. I've got a client where I mean, I'm in their CRM, I'm building an SMS list, and they thought it would be cool to go over to community.com one day. So one day they did this and say, hey, Patrick, we've got a new tool for community.com. I built my list up to thousands. I'm like, okay, can I have that list now so I can put it over in the CRM and there's no exportability. And I've even messaged them and they said they have no intention to export it. So if you're going to use it, um, just be aware that it, it's going to be an additional platform. I know it got popular because they got people like Mark Cuban and Gary Vee and some other people to get you know on community.com early to help their marketing. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just, well, I take that back. If you can't export. That is wrong. If you can't <laughs> export, wrong. there's no backup, right? I mean, exactly. I would agree with you, right? That that would prevent me from getting on the platform yeah. for sure. In my, in my CRM, like over in Keep or in Entreport, I can export all that information into a CSV on my computer and put it in Dropbox. Community.com, last time I checked, you cannot export anything. So wow. no, one downside, but it's a really good SMS texting platform from what I hear. I've never been in it myself. Okay. Uh, we've talked about social. We know we don't own this. Um, we've talked about email marketing a little bit, exporting subscribers. But let's talk a little bit more about kind of, you know, how to, we, we've talked about how to manage the disaster recovery on our stuff in the cloud. But Phil, what about this box I've got right here? I've got a, a Mac <laughs> mini right here with a hard drive in it. It's got my livelihood on it. It's got my daughter's elementary school pictures on it. It's got everything on it. What should I be doing, Phil, with this box right here in case this room catches on fire and all my data just poof disappears from my box? What do I do? Well, just pray, man. There's nothing else we can do, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, right? Of course, I'm teasing. So with that, I personally, here's how I do it. And I do the same thing on my phone, whether it's a Mac Mini or whatever. I back up first. I certainly back up to Google Photos and okay. Google everywhere, right? I try to save as much as I can off in Google. Secondly, Dropbox, same way. I back up my pictures, I back up as much as I can in Dropbox. Third, Amazon Photos, right? Amazon Photos is another one that I back it up. And then an external hard drive, for sure. Now you might say, well, that's like wearing a belt, suspenders, and a painted on mustache. Well, it is, but your daughter's elementary school photos, Patrick, come on. What would you pay to have those back if you lost them? Oh, those are timeless. There's there's no amount. Timeless, I wouldn't pay them, priceless, right? right? So here's the thing. I strongly recommend you find multiple places you can back things up. Right. Do you always need an external hard drive? No, you don't. But know that if you don't have one, you're probably going to pay a subscription fee mm -hmm. at some point, maybe not today, 
But at some point, you're going to pay a subscription fee in order to do that. And you know what? Dropbox locked me in. They get 120 bucks a year, mostly just for photos. But now I'm video and now, <laughs> now I'm really locked in. Right. But I, and I, you know, I'm, I'm looking around. I don't even know where, where my portable hard drive is right now. So I actually feel kind of naked without it. But multiple places gives me opportunity to, to get there. And I like, I have to be able to access it on my computer, on my phone, and on your computer, right? If things go wrong, right. I need to be able to run over to your house and say, dude, let me log in and get my stuff. Because that means I could do that with any brand new computer or any refurb or any computer, right? Just to get my stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I, I get my backup philosophy from how we imagine it when I was at the data center. I just have to imagine the different scenarios. Okay. Scenario one is I deleted a file by mistake. I need to go recover it. Okay. That's just regular backups. Or if you're lucky, it's right there in your computer trash can. Um, Dropbox uh, has versioning. So like if you need like an old version and you delete it in Dropbox, you can go recover it. So that's scenario one. Scenario two is something like, you know, you physically lost a hard drive, okay? And that is, again, that can be solved by Dropbox, backing up stuff there, backing up to another piece of media. Um, I do a lot of local TV appearances, and to issue with, I grab all those clips onto my computer, but um, uh, the news stations oftentimes will take those down. So I grab a copy as soon as possible, and I save them in multiple places because I can't get those back. Those are really important to me. And I guess, yes, my daughter's elementary school picture is also important to me. Um, but, and then my third scenario is like the massive disaster. Like this house burns down and everything in this house is gone. Or my neighborhood, we live in, you know, I live in Tornado Alley. Uh, a tornado here coming up in, you know, what, March, April, May, June. That's not unheard of. So everything is gone. And then I can do, I have to imagine to what you just said is, I have to run down to the Apple store or run down to the used computer store and I have to get a machine as soon as I've figured out what I'm going to do with my house now it's gone. I have to get a machine, install iCloud on it or install Dropbox on it and get back into business as soon as possible because because my, my life and my accounting and all that stuff is relying on that stuff. So what you mentioned kind of covers all those scenarios, especially something like Dropbox. I For a while there, I was kind of torn between Dropbox and iCloud and I drank the Apple Kool-Aid now and I'm completely iCloud. I don't even have Dropbox anymore. Um, eh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure about that decision, but I was gonna have iCloud anyways. So I saw, I didn't see the need to pay for, for both of them. Um, but so you're, so you're talking about um, external hard drives. Um, do you actually, here's a question for you, which people might wanna know. Do you keep your files in like regular folders on your computer and copy them to Dropbox? Or do you do what I do a while back because I got tired of copying is I just my all of my folders are just in, in my cloud. Like those are the main locations for saving stuff. How do you do it? Yeah, so I absolutely will copy them up to Dropbox about once a month on the first of the month. That's my goal to do that. Sometimes that pushes back or I move it up. But yeah, I actually will physically do that. And I have a strong folder structure on my desktop. Okay. And I can just copy folders in. And I know that a lot of the folders, to be quite honest with you, Patrick, I haven't touched. Right. But at the same time, like I don't need all the photos from my uh, from from my phone at the ready on my desktop. Right. I don't need that. I don't need uh, all the videos because I've got, you know, a video file of an hour keynote mm -hmm. is a four or six gigabyte file. Oh. Right. So for me, right, I don't need that stuff at the ready. I put it in Dropbox and then if I need it, then I can download it and then I can delete it off the hard drive knowing that the original is still up there. And I'll tell you, Patrick, I'm kind of clumsy. So sometimes it, when I used to sync stuff up the way that you're talking about or had Dropbox as my primary source, well, if I would reformat a hard drive or something, I was always worried that, oh my God, I just lost all my Dropbox. And that did happen. I had to dig stuff out of there. Mm -hmm. And that really frustrated me to do that. So I do copy them up. And that way, if I do lose my hard drive, yeah, I might lose a day or two, maybe a month's worth of stuff. Seldom though. I mean, because if it's really important, I'm absolutely backing that stuff up. Right. But most of the stuff, not so much. Yeah. Now, um, both Dropbox and iCloud have a feature, which I'm, you're probably using now, that smart sync feature. Where yeah. if, if you have a like a if you dump like a huge video in there and you don't use it for a week or two, 
Dropbox is actually smart enough now to where it'll make sure that the copy in the cloud is good and it'll actually physically erase the file off of your hard yeah, drive. Yeah, I hate that though. I hate you know, that. Like that. Oh, I, love I hate that. that. Why no, well, here, well, so here's why, right? So here's the thing. I, uh, for me, it's the music thing, not so much video because I don't play, I don't, I don't ever touch my own video. Okay. I don't edit video. I don't touch it, right? Except that it'll go up to the cloud. It'll go off to a video editor. Um, or it'll go converted MP3, but here's the thing, right? So when that happens, now I've got it downloaded. Usually the reason that I'm listening to something locally instead of a streaming service like a Spotify, instead because I don't have internet. Otherwise, I just use Spotify. Now, yes, can I download things from Spotify for sure? But sometimes that doesn't happen, right? So right. I really like having my um, my music local. Okay. Because otherwise, it also, it screws up my playlist because I don't play every playlist every day because uh, I'm not okay. commuting anymore. Like when I commute every day, that'll be different if I ever commute every day again. That's a, you know, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. <laughs> Got it. Okay, now that makes sense. So I, I can see that for certain scenarios. For my video stuff, I like it because it, sure. frees, it frees up my hard drive space. Uh, with my last machine, I actually bought a minimal amount of hard drive space because of that feature. I don't... I don't need a one or a two terabyte hard drive in my computer anymore, uh, you know, 100% of the time. I just need enough for any given set of files, and that stuff will migrate off automatically. So I think yeah. that hit uh, on all the major points on disaster. One automatic. point. One point. What's what? Ads, man. Do we pause ads or do we not pause ads? What happens if the oh, world ends? I'm sorry. What happens yes. if our landing pages go down? What happens if our website goes down? Do we drive people to nowhere? I mean, do we have anything there as a backup for that? And in that scenario, I guess it kind of depends on your service. Like if you're using like a hosted service like ClickFunnels or something, there's no real good backup for that. So you've got to pause your ads. Um, but if you're a big WordPress guys like Phil and I are, then yeah, you, you would, well, I guess in every, every scenario, you're going to pause your ads, but the nice part about hosting it on your own WordPress site is you can recover backups and you can probably get your stuff back up and running pretty quick and getting your ads back, back up and running. And the reason that Phil brought this up is because my scenario right now with a, with a client right before this call is, uh, their, their landing pages and click funnels are down and we're kind of in a bind. Do we, do we stop ads and save on the money? Cause every click is a couple of dollars or do we keep them running and, you know, go to plan B and get our landing pages up. So right after this recording's done, I'm going to get back to the client trying to figure out that issue. What's, what's, what's your take on that? My take is, yeah, you're definitely going to pause ads because you're, otherwise you're just burning, you're lighting dollar bills on fire and you're smoking them. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And remember to do that. Remember to pause ads, right? And and I would say, also, if there's another disaster in the world, mm -hmm. that might be an opportunity for you to consider pausing your ads too. Because right. the last thing you want to do is be insensitive when there is a massive disaster in the world and you're running ads for, yay, be more successful or lose seven pounds when people might be using these as critical communication message, uh, methods. Yeah, we've seen some scenarios in the past, or even like free social media, where someone's using a, a pre-scheduled tool. I use a pre-scheduled tool for my social media. I've got my stuff planned out, and it just kind of runs an autopilot. Well, then something horrible happens, and you know my account tweets out something that is totally, totally off color or you know out of out of sync with what this, the nation's going through right now. And then when you do that, your followers will let you know in a heartbeat, and you'll probably even lose some followers in the process. <laughs> yeah, so I've been there absolutely. Now. Okay, so we've talked about uh, we've talked about all the different ways to kind of back up your business and live in a disaster-proof world. Uh, the last thing that Phil and I are going to touch on here is that there. Um, Phil and I are obviously know a lot about different marketing topics, and we know a lot of really smart people on marketing topics. And we're working on an event for you. We don't have a landing page up yet, but we're going to be. I'm going to head over to Orlando and hang out with Phil. We're going to get together a bunch of experts together, and we're going to get together people like you, your list, our listeners. Uh, to to basically learn some of the stuff we're talking about in person, to learn about social media, to learn about landing pages and ads and all that different stuff. So we don't have a quick, quick website up. So Phil, while we're working on the website, if somebody wants to join us in Orlando, how do they get a hold of us? Well, you can find us on social media, Patrick Almond, Phil Gerbyshek, you can find us. Or if you're going to write this down and pay attention, we'll get you on a waiting list at orlandomarketingsummit.com. It's not up yet. Right. So as you're listening to this, 
If you're like, oh, crap, it doesn't work. I promise it will be soon. <laughs> Patrick and I will get it up by the early, early September for you once everything is back with the world. But I do encourage you, find us. Let us know. Ask us a question. Promise it'll be worth your while. Stuff like this that maybe you never even thought about, right? Disaster proof your marketing. What? Yeah, we can help you with all this stuff. And yeah, we're going to bring in some other sm smart folks as well. So you can really crank up your marketing and your sales games. Right. For, for, fortunately for both Phil and I, we both have pretty unique names. So if you search for Phil Gerbeshack or Patrick Allman on social media or even in Google, the chances of you coming up with the wrong person are slim to none. Uh, if yeah. it's Phil, there's going to be orange in the picture someplace. And if Patrick, let's just say there's going to be brown in the picture someplace. Okay. <laughs> So search for either one of us on social media. Search for either one of us on social media. Drop us your contact information. We'll get you on the waiting list. We're looking like, I think we said, we say October. 18, said, 19, 20 in November. 18, 19, 20 of November is when we're looking at doing this. And it will be in Orlando, Florida. Phil's home there. So uh, drop each of us, uh, drop one or other one of us. Drop one of us. That's why I prefer not having any water when I talk for an hour. Drop one of us uh, some kind of private message on social media right now, and we will get back to you. So as always, Phil, I appreciate your time and your expertise, sir. Um, if you had Always one fun. final tip for someone to kind of disaster-proof their business, what would it be? Yeah, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread the risk across and don't be afraid to wear belt suspenders and a fake mustache because you can't be too backed up. I like that. And I would say cloud. Cloud, 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 cloud. Get everything in the cloud. Like I said a while back, I used to use Dropbox uh, and iCloud. And I would actually have one inside the other. So like I had my Dropbox folder inside my iCloud folder. So I was like backing up on top. You're of a that. nerd. <laughs> yeah, I'm a nerd for sure. <laughs> But because I drank the Apple Kool-Aid a while back, I got rid of Dropbox and I'm in iCloud. So every single thing I do on my computer happens in iCloud. My And this office can literally burn down. I just got to run down to the Apple store and pay for, for more very expensive Kool-Aid. Uh, but at least I could I can be up and running pretty quick. So uh, hopefully this uh, episode has been useful for you guys. As always, reach out to Phil or I if you ever need any kind of LinkedIn marketing help or marketing help in general. Or if you want to go deeper into any of the topics that we talked about here. We both do you know, nationwide international consulting and we'd both be glad to help you. So until we hit another episode of the Stop Doing Nothing show, thank you as always for listening. I don't have to tell you, subscribe, like, rate, drop a comment, do whatever you can to make sure you stay in touch with the Stop Doing Nothing show. And Phil, until next time, sir, when I see you, have a great, great week and uh, we'll you talk too. to you soon, sir.